Hello everyone, we are starting day seven of the fine molds build. And yeah, TIE Fighter. I shouldn't say fine molds because there's lots of fine molds kits, including a um, Millennium Falcon. But anyhow, got my optivisors and I'm ready to go. And they're real optivisors because it says so. You guys can see that in there. Okay, I don't really care if they're real or not as long as they work, to be honest with all of you. All right, so got the resin cast from last night. It came out pretty. One thing I can say about the Oyamaru is it is not degrading over time. It, the resin's a little sticky on the back, which there's a strip of it where it's sticky across the back. But it also says it takes 72 hours to cure fully. And this is not even 24 hours, so I can't say too much about it. Yeah, I'm hearing noises outside, so I'm looking. Big truck went by. Anyhow, I'm going to get at this. I'm going to make another cast with my Oya Maru. And next weekend, I can actually hack into these guys and start cleaning them up and working on them properly. Also, BB starts her build next weekend. I'm seeing a distortion to the shape of this thing here. I might have to redo the mold. Time to pull out the actual piece and take a look. It's in the box. Project box. I see a lot of you like that idea. Let me get my glasses out and take a piece. Look, if there's a distortion to the shape of this thing, It's perfect. Uh, let you guys here. Let's do this. Let's drop the camera focus down here, like I do when I'm working, and hit the magic button. Pink. Okay. Now you can see it's just fitting in there, perfect. Any overlapped edges are fine. I've got the part in upside down. It goes this way. But you see, it's almost a perfect copy. Any overlapped edges are fine. Even the locator pins are fairly well there. It's missing it kind of on that side. But there's ways of dealing with that. I could just trace along the edge of this with a pen. <coughs> and that'll do it. I'm wondering if the mold's getting old or the stuff just didn't even get in there properly. Probably the later, not the former. And I am going to do some sanding on this piece once it cures up. I'm, I'm okay with it being frosted because it's just to carry a red light and it doesn't have to be optically clear. Although the stuff is pretty close to optically clear. I think the reason we have some distortion on this side is just due to the mold release that I'm spraying in there. Okay. Which does its job. This thing pops right out free and clear pretty easily. Anyhow, this is supposed to cure for another two or three days, so I'm going to go ahead and just set her aside and let her cure. And as long as that shape does not distort any, we've got one down, and I need one more. I might make a third as a spare, just in case something happens, because you never know. And having a third one doesn't hurt. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. And go ahead. I'm going to make another one before I quit today. Okay. I don't think I necessarily need to detail that process because you take this, you take this, you mix equal parts together. I'm mixing them in a bowl and I'm just pouring it right in the mold. That's all I do. There's nothing more to it. Now, maybe I should have shown how this stuff works, but if you search for Oya Maru, on eBay, I mean on YouTube, you will find plenty of outlines for it. But I don't think it would hurt for me to do that if I have to make another cast. I'm just pretty happy I bought this stuff a long time ago. I bought it while I was making the Godzilla thing because I was trying to replicate the Godzilla, I mean the scales on King Ghidorah. That was not an easy task to accomplish. And I was using this to replicate the scales right next to where the seam was. And then I was taking some Abe's epoxy sculpt and pressing it inside this to make an imprint of the scales. 
on the actual model kit. It worked fairly well. There's only one or two spots where it didn't work well. And this stuff seems to be holding up fairly well because it's fairly rigid. It's not like silicon. I wouldn't try this making two-part molds with this or anything. But for the purpose I'm using, it works great. All right, let me get to it. One other thing before I get turn the camera off for a bit. Hit the magic button. Bam! This right here didn't get centered properly, so I'm going to have to yank it off and pull it back on. It's only off by a hair. The wife told me she wouldn't have noticed unless I pointed it out to her. So what I've got here is some fingernail polish remover, acetone base. I'm going to hit it with a Q-tip and just soften it and then pop the piece off. Because I know that I'll pop the piece off and then I can re-glue it back down. I'll clean up the surface and re-glue it back down. This will pull it off and lacquer thinner will pull it off. I just don't really want to use lacquer thinner too much on the surface of the model kit because it can discolor and remove textures. Just so you know, lacquer thinner does soften the plastic. That can too, but that one takes a longer time. All right, so let me get at things because I got a limited amount of time before the wife gets home. When she gets home, it's dinner date time. We're going to a movie and dinner. So I got to be ready for her when she gets here. So let me get busy. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, everyone. I'm just showing you what happened. I took, this is covered with some of my fingernail polish remover. I'm gonna buy some more pretty soon. This stuff's kind of cheap. Okay, got her good and wet right now. And we're gonna hit the magic button. I like calling it the magic button. Instead of zooming like I used to do, I push a button and it's done. Okay, and I'm just going to put it on there and just start wiping. And there was some pretty good uh, super glue residual on there. Residue. There we go. That's the right name. Residue. And this is taking it right off. Okay. Getting her down to the bare naked styrene. Alrighty. And in case you're wondering, you can find these in the health and beauty aisle um, of your local grocery store. They're just regular old Q-tips for health and beauty. That tip holds up fairly well under direct pressure. I'm going to swap this over to some lacquer thinner because this is some older super glue and it's not budging. It did loosen the part up. That part came off with little or no trouble. Just put some of this on there and stuck the X-Acto knife under it and pop, it came right off. So that was not trouble. <clears throat> Let me switch it over to some lacquer thinner. Let's see if that does any better. Because I'm learning, there's two universal solvents in everything in the model world. One is lacquer thinner. This stuff takes and undoes any paint problem you have, period. I haven't seen a paint yet that can hold up to lacquer thinner. The other one is 91% alcohol. It's just like lacquer thinner. Not much anything holds up to that stuff. I don't know. Some of the Walmart primers probably can hold up to both of them. And that's about it. Because both of them are pretty, pretty strong when it comes to removing paint and surface details and stuff. I mean, you can tell right here. I just wiped up some spilled resin right there with lacquer thinner. It took the top of my mat off. It's not denting this, unfortunately. It doesn't look like the super glue is coming loose at all. Now, I can hit it with some sandpaper. This is why I won't use super glue as a filler. Because once you get this stuff on your model, it don't want to come off. And it dries harder than the plastic. Which, to me, is not a bonus. I don't like it when the glue, when your filler dries harder than the plastic. It means when you start sanding like I'm sanding right now, I say I'm the plastic and not the filler. And if you guys understand that idea, that's yeah, a good one. 
All right, and I'm not using this one again. So let me get my a new fresh bottle cap right there. Let me get my Gorilla Super Glue. Again, I use this stuff because this curing time is measured in like five or 10 seconds instead of instantaneous. Because when you put the part down and it sticks immediately and you can't position it, that is not fun when you're working with Photo Etch. You need to be able to place the part and take your time and push it around a little bit and get it in place. You also notice I'm spreading that super glue kind of thin and I overdid it a little bit. I'll clean that up in a second. You'll see that. So I have my poster tack on the end of that. So blob it on there and then put the part down. And there's a problem with long set super glue is yeah, the poster tack holds it better than the super glue does at first. Yeah, I got a mess to clean up here. Of course I would do this on camera, but the happy thought about me doing this on camera is you guys get to see how to clean up a super glue mess when you make one. Cause I got too much super glue on here. And we can't have that because that will show under a good magnification with a good camera. All that shows. Everything shows. That's why I'm looking at this with an Optivisor. Bare naked eye, you probably won't notice any of that. Now, that is a much better alignment than what I had a little while ago to me. Much, much better. Of course, I had to put a big old thumbprint on there and I distort the alignment a teeny bit. Okay, let me take a look. It can go up a little bit more. Like that. It needs to come this way a little bit. Like that. Move it like that. I think that's pretty good right there. Yeah, and I will eyeball with toothpicks like this. See my measuring? I will sit there and use the toothpick to measure my alignment. And see if it's right and I'm basically eyeballing I like that alignment okay now I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit or not <laughs> you know why wait yeah let's just put a little bit of lacquer thinner on here just a touch you don't take much all you have to do is touch the tip to the q-tip and that yeah, of course, I'll move the part a little bit, too, and I'll have to recheck my alignment. But that does clean that up. Let me check my alignment again. There we go. Does that look about right? It looks about right to me. I think it needs a good touch. Things are going to start setting up now. Let me put on the optivisors so I can see even better. Because I can get in here and see the little scratch marks and stuff on the surface. Yep, I can see this is off just a hair. The part's going to start solidifying on me in a second, though. My working time's about gone on this glue. She's not centered. My working time's going away real quick. I can feel the parts starting to stick. And yes, I'm being this uptight with this because, well, this is for a contest. I won't be able to take this to other contests other than Skill Model Attic. Okay? I want people to see this TIE Fighter. Alright, I think that's good right there. It's fairly well centered. It's right on the edge the way I want it. Alright, we're leaving it and the glue is setting up. So let me show you guys. Right there. I pulled it off, redid the alignment, that glue is setting up. I'm leaving her be. Now if I remember right, that's all the photo etch on the front part of this thing. 
we take a good look at the sheet and see. Well, no, it's not. There's still two pieces that go at the top. I've been checking them off as I go on the sheet itself. Okay. And if you, you can see my check marks if you look. Because I just did these two here. Let's undo the magic button so you can see what I'm doing. I just did these two here. I've done those. I've done those. I haven't done these two. And I haven't done number seven. The, I haven't done number seven because i got to remove more detail on the honor. Number seven. Oh, that's the back. No, that's not the back. That is the front. Whew, scared me for a little bit. Number seven goes right here, so I have to remove more surface detail to put number seven on. Okay? So here, let's make this where you see the part better. Number seven goes right here. So i got to remove some more detail, and I'll put number seven there. And then there's two number 20s and more detail removal that go here and here. And then I've got the whole front half of the ship done with its photo etch. At the back, I'm nowhere near done with. The back has a lot more to go. Okay? A lot more. But I'm almost done with the front. And that will be a high five moment. Because, well, I'm not halfway done with the photo etch. But it just says I've made some good progress. Alright, I'll come back. I'm going to remove that detail. Well, why don't we stay here and remove some of the detail on camera so you guys can watch again. Because I don't know if you've seen someone do this. Okay? Make sure I'm still on camera because sometimes these things go off. Now, I'm taking an X-Acto blade. And I've, I've, I've quit pretty much using the chisels and the scribers. I'm just basically using my X-Acto blade. I have to get a comfortable angle on it before I start. One that makes me happy. That'll make me happy. But it's hard for you guys to see. You can see what I'm doing, though. And I very slowly. It doesn't look like I'm going very slow. Because the knife jumps. The knife jumps when I get free. I'm not putting a lot of force on it, either. This is good. This is kind of soft plastic. <laughs> which is good for removing detail and sanding and working with I suspect it will glue very nicely because it is kind of soft now it's okay if I leave some marks where the parts used to be because the photo etch will cover that up I don't I try not to though because I'm trying to hone my skills of removal because well you never know when you want to remove some surface detail on a kit. And you never like the detail in the first place. Helps keep your blade clean too. Of all the little plastic shavings. I can see I've done something I didn't like. I'll have to repair it. I'm leaving the little scratch marks right along this edge and I don't like it so I'm changing my angle on my knife a little bit so I quit leaving scratch marks like that there we go now that's coming off really nice it's just like slicing a piece of cheese off a block it's not like slicing butter no It's just like trying to slice that really thin layer of cheese off a block of cheese. You can't go real fast with it or you won't get a thin layer. I do hit it with the sander occasionally because that cleans up my edges and my chips. I won't do this with a Dremel, although some of you probably would. Because these parts are too small. And you're running too big of a risk. And I'm using a pretty low grit sandpaper too. You're running too big of a risk of gouging out the surface. When you do a Dremel like that. Okay. And if you want some practice on this. Go get yourself an old AMT Millennium Falcon kit. 
and scrape all the pipes off the surface. She's beat up anyhow, so a few scratches here and there don't matter. And if you spend the time it takes to scrap all those pipes off that surface, you'll get good at this. Because there's a lot of pipes on the surface of that shit model. And I scraped dang near all of them off mine. Replacing them with brass rod. Speaking of which, I know I keep saying I'm getting back to that model, but when the contest is done, I won't have any current ongoing projects, so... Yes, I'm going to get to that one. Now, I've probably got this removed enough to put that photo etch on, but... The wife and a couple of you have told me I'm a perfectionist, and that works against me at times. I agree, I know it works against me. Because I spend too much time working on something. And you can see right there, I have pretty much completely removed all of that surface detail. It's pretty much gone. You can see a ghost image of it. But you put that under primer and you might not even know that was there. Now I can get part number seven and put it on there. And I'll be back and show you the end result.